everybody. Welcome to the NBC for our streaming center. I am chatting with Pat from our sister station, Fox KC, right now in Kansas City because we got a big game, Ohio versus uh, Kansas City at this point. We're excited about it here in Ohio. Pat, how are you guys feeling there? I can uh, tell by the background that you guys were talking about it all morning. Yes, yes. Very excited. It, it's uh, a golden age for Chiefs fans. Um, not bragging here, but they're this is the fourth straight AFC title game in Kansas City. So it's the fourth year in a row that the road to the Super Bowl goes through Kansas City. So we're very excited. All right. So we have a lot of Ohioans headed to Kansas City. Um, it's about a 10-hour drive, but 70 takes you straight there. So it's an easy one if you are making it. Cincinnati itself a little bit closer. We are uh, two hours north of that area. Right? 70? Am I correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I-70. Yep. Yeah. I-70 goes all the way from Columbus to Kansas City. Um so tell us what we need to know. What is tell us about Kansas City? I've never visited. I've heard lots about it. I have a, I have a close friend that is from there, and his her husband's family is from there. But all I know is that there are beautiful fountains, and I'm sure there's much, much That's more. Right. That's right, Christine. Yeah, it's a city of fountains, and uh, it's funny. I'm glad you asked because I used to live in St. Louis. So I went to college in St. Louis, and then I worked for the NBC affiliate in St. Louis, and for years, and I never even thought to come to Kansas City, and. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I just, it didn't occur to me to come. So when I moved here four years ago, I was absolutely floored with everything that Kansas City had to offer. Um, so I would say, yeah, definitely. If you're driving uh, from Ohio on I-70, obviously, um, I would stop in St. Louis. I'm kind of partial to St. Louis, okay. but, you know, take a picture by the arch. You know, if you've never, have you ever personally been near the arch, Christine? I haven't, no. It's crazy. It, it's it's 635 feet tall. It's right on the riverfront. You, you know, you can't miss it when you drive through St. Louis. And if you just stop and stand underneath it, it's free. To, you know, it's just mind boggling because, it. you know, you just like, how is this not falling over? This is crazy. Yeah. You can even ride up to the top of it. But anyway, that's St. Louis. I'm not <laughs> here to talk about St. Louis. Uh, but then uh, Kansas City is just loaded with cool stuff to do. And so I would uh, definitely say um, if you're getting here um, – between, you know, if you have time, if you're getting here tomorrow on Saturday, the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum is unbelievable. It's one of the things Kansas City is really well known for, uh, and it is does not disappoint. It is incredible. If you're any kind of a sports fan, any kind of a history buff, and it's right in um, sort of our historic 18th and Vine district, which is, you know, where, you know, Kansas City has a say in like sort of the beginnings of jazz. You know, it was a huge jazz city back in the day. And so, so that's this really cool neighborhood. So I would, I would go there. And then the other thing, I could go on all day, but the other thing, if you're a history buff, that is um, really, really impressive is Kansas City has a World War I museum mm. and a big Liberty Memorial. You can't miss. It's not as high as the arch, but it's like 250 feet tall. And it's a world-class, no pun intended, incredible museum. I know most people would think World War I, you know, I could see World War II. This World War One museum is unbelievable. It's so well done. And it in it is eerie because it explains all the causes of World War One and it's very relatable to today. It's multimedia with all kinds of stuff. Um, so that's really cool. But if you don't I'm talking about museums. If you just want to come here and have a good time, there's plenty of uh, places to party. Uh, the power and light district is the newer area that's right by uh, our t-mobile center um the big arena downtown but the power and light district is like one of those you know it's a manufactured party zone but whatever yeah it you know there's all kinds of bars and restaurants and you know it's where people go to be seen and then also more historically there's the country club plaza mm -hmm. which is beautiful fountains it's like the first it's, uh, how do I put this? The first sort of outdoor walking mall ever in the country. was really? like 1920. And that's really one of the, you know, on the short list of five things you have to do if you come to Kansas City. Okay, cool. Um, So I hear you're talking about world-class museums and the beautiful fountains, but um, I know you guys are really well known for your barbecue and there's, you know, yes. stiff competition for where is the best barbecue. If you could recommend a few places for our Ohioans, where would you recommend? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's like five or six that are like on the short list that people argue about. Um, Q39 is my personal favorite. Um, it's, it's right in the city. It's, uh, it's really good. It's, um, 
you know, all kinds of different barbecue, all kinds of, but Q39, um, I would also say Arthur Bryant's is another one that is very famous. And um, I'm trying to think, oh, Gates and Gates Barbecue. Like those, those are just, there's also the, Joe's Kansas City is the other one. Jim Gaffigan, you know, the comedian yeah, Jim Gaffigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he did a whole bit uh, recently about Joe's Kansas City because that one is actually inside a gas station, which <laughs> sounds crazy, but people line up for, you wouldn't believe how long people stand in line at these barbecue places. Um, and, uh, and at Gates Barbecue, what's kind of fun, there's a couple of different locations, um, Gate, you know, like Swinging Gate. Yeah. Um, the staff there are famously kind of like um, sassy and, you know, like the whole part, you know, it's like those famous Chicago eateries where like, you, you know, they show their love for you by kind of insulting I like you it. and yelling at you. I like it. Right? I like that, it. That's Gates, right, Jeff? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm here for it. All right. So we know what to see. We know what to eat. Talk about what the atmosphere is going to be like inside the stadium, inside the stadium district. Um, what are the fans like? What are some of the sights and sounds that um, some Bengals fans will uh, hear once they get there? Yeah, I, I'm glad you asked that, Christine. Yeah. Um, I was hoping you'd ask that. Uh, because also, um, uh, Kentucky is playing at KU on Saturday. Oh, wow. You know, so that's another. That is um, huge. I think, yeah, so there's like two reasons there's going to be a lot of people from you know, the Ohio, uh, Kentucky, Ohio Valley area mm -hmm. are going to be in Kansas City. So what I would say is um, um, there is Kansas City nice. All right. There's the Midwest nice. OK. That, you know, the very nice people um, everywhere. But, you know, Power and Light District, Country Club Plaza, the museums, the barbecue. Right? You're totally fine walking in with your Bengals gear. Yeah. You know, Midwest nice all the way. I would say... <laughs> At Arrowhead Stadium on Sunday, I'm, you know, I'd be a little more careful. Is is all I would say. Okay. Uh, keep keep people. May shut be your a trap. Little, there may be a little less Midwest nights on game day <laughs> if you're walking around the parking lot in Bengals gear. Listen, I've got Ohio Stadium down the street. I'm a Buckeye alum. There's a lot of us. We get it. We get it. We can be yeah. a little. We can be a little sharp tongued when we see the opposing team. Yeah, like so. Imagine like you know a Michigan fan. You know. <sighs> Just sort of like walking around, you know, running his mouth. Um, I mean, what would you tell that guy, you know? Shut his trap. <laughs> yeah, okay, I get it. I like it. Very cool. So you guys obviously are having an amazing run with the Kansas City Chiefs yeah. right now. What did you call it? The gold, like a golden age kind of? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Like We were joking this morning on our morning show. It's like these... You know, there's an old Carly Simon song uh, where she says, these are the good old days. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of like how uh, Chiefs fans, because it's a, it's unprecedented. Yeah. You know, Mahomes won a Super Bowl. We went and lost last year, but we could go again this year. And, and you know, any NFL fan will tell you, I mean, it's the window is short Yeah. to, to win a championship. I mean, this, you know, to keep the band together, you know, Mahomes will be here long term, but, you know, the, the rest of his supporting cast. So, yeah, so this really feels like a very special time to be a Chiefs fan. And um, so they're very excited. And just the way everything broke last weekend with your Bengals taking out the Titans. Yeah. So the game is here in Kansas City. What a weekend so of people, football. But, but I'll tell you what, big respect, though, yeah. for um, Burroughs and the Bengals. You know, uh, Jamar Chase, you know, yeah. burned us, uh, scorched our defense the last time they met. So they're not taking anything for granted.